This is Twit. So Magic Leap it has kind of been a little bit of an obsession of mine uh, over because the last couple of years it's been so you know shaded in secrecy. Uh, finally, it's available to the public. The company hopes that you're going to jump at the chance to drop a paltry two thousand two hundred ninety nine dollars for a pair of its high quality, high profile mixed reality goggle technology. And it's been a long time coming. Honestly, I'm of the opinion that after this much buildup, I don't know how you feel about this, Megan, but it's going to be next to impossible for them to live up to that, right? They've set, them, set the bar so high. Regardless, I'm excited to check it out for myself, and I hope that I get the chance to soon, like the team at iFixit did. They got their hands on one, and as they usually do, they wasted no time spilling its high-tech guts all over the place and documenting the experience along the way. Joining us to talk about the Magic Leap Teardown is Jeff Suvenon from iFixit. How you doing, Jeff? Hi, good. How are you guys? Doing awesome. It's great to get you here. Thank you uh, for taking time to talk to us about this, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about the Magic Leap and then maybe also about the Note 9, but let's start with the Magic Leap because I think that's the more interesting piece of hardware that we haven't seen before. Before we get into the, the teardown, you got to spend a, a little bit of time with it, actually wearing it and experiencing what it has to offer. What do you think? Very little, yeah. Uh, you know, so we don't do product reviews; we do teardowns. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, the play time was very limited. I only got a few minutes with it, but um, it was very interesting. Um, I, you've probably had some experience with VR headsets, like I have. I've, I've tried the Rift and the Vive and things like that. I got kind of a similar. Uh, wow factor from this. It felt like having interactive holograms in the room with you. Um, so that was pretty neat. Um, so, so it was convincing enough. But, I, I, but was it revolutionary as I, I think they would they would want it to be? I think it depends. It was my first AR experience. I thought it was pretty cool. But oh, I'm okay. hearing from folks who've tried like Microsoft's HoloLens that it's uh, a pretty pretty comparable. Better, but oh, okay. but not necessarily a quantum leap forward. Got it. All right. So I, like you said, you know, you, you played with it a little bit, but you really tore this down. And that's kind of what this is all about here. Uh, everything that we saw in advance and that, that we're seeing is that this is a high quality, you know, builds and, you know, the, the components are unlike anything you've seen before. Upon closer inspection, what did you think? Yeah, I think that's mostly true. Um, I think it's really clear to us that they really spent a lot of time on the ergonomics, on getting the weight down. It's arguably, you know, the best looking um, head mounted display, <laughs> which is saying uh, a lot because it's still today. pretty goofy looking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I still felt pretty dorky wearing it, but, um, it, you know, it, it's, it's definitely an improvement. It's, it's getting much better. Um, and I, I think they spent a lot of money most likely on stuff like manufacturing custom waveguides. That kind of thing doesn't come cheap. Um, on the not so premium end, um, the controller tracking is a little bit last gen. Uh, we were a little surprised by that. Um, and then, of course, the optics itself, you know, the displays are very cool. Um, but as you kind of alluded to earlier, they fall short of sort of the hype that that Magic Leap has been building up over the years. Mm -hmm. um, so that was interesting. I know uh, Palmer Lucky reviewed the Magic Leap. He also helped a little bit in the teardown. He did. Uh, you know, we've had... Um, Several friendly exchanges with Palmer over the years, um, going back quite a while since, um, well, before he became a figure of controversy. Uh, reason being, he's a VR expert. Um, he uh, founded Oculus, and he's, uh, you know, we very enthusiastically torn down every Oculus product going back since the first developer kit. So when he offered to send us his Magic Leap uh, so we could take it apart, we said yes. Also, it was his. Oh yeah, that, well that's that's what I, my thought was. Yeah, he probably bought a couple, one to keep in his uh, his museum of VR, which I have to imagine he has, and another one to give to you to to spill the guts of. But uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, he was our he was our our in. Uh, we have our own Magic Leap on order, but um, you know, thanks to getting a hold of of Palmer's, I think we probably got this teardown done weeks or months sooner than we would have otherwise. So, yeah, yeah. So that you, was cool. You really did. Um, anything anything special like about the lens architecture specifically? Like the the teardown, a lot of it made sense, but then once it gets to the kind of the breakdown of what's happening on a visual sense, I will admit I kind of got a little lost because it really seems like it's it's doing something, obviously it's doing something more than like smartphone VR where it's just literally a screen right in front of your eye and that's it. It's projecting things into the light field and there's a couple of different kind of uh, planes onto which that's happening. How are they doing this? What, what's going on behind the scenes? 
yeah, I'm with you, Jason. I have no optics training, so this was an education for me, this teardown. Um, it, it uses, uh, Magic Leap 1 uses something called waveguide displays. Um, you can think of it as, um, it's sort of like, it looks like a thin piece of glass, like a lens. Um, and, uh, well, here I have... <laughs> What do you have, have it with you? Part of the disassembled unit oh, here. So it, it basically, is. if I can get it up in front of the camera, it looks very much like a lens um, where the image is guided in sort of invisibly from the side. And, and I don't know if you can see on this, uh, yeah. my, my webcam, but there's a rectangular section in the middle there. That's the actual uh, display where that image is bounced into your eye. Um, so um, it's not a new technology. Waveguides have been around for a while. Um, HoloLens also uses waveguide displays. Um, but this is better. It's more sophisticated. Um, it uses actually a stack of six waveguides per eye. Um, so it's got two focus planes, and then those are each split up into three color channels. So six waveguides per eye. Uh, in that nice shot you're showing there, we've got a close-up of the waveguide, and you can see the layers all laminated together if you click that image and blow it up. Um, not fundamentally new technology, but certainly a very cool uh, implementation. Yeah. So uh, what kind of repairability score did it get? Repairability was a mixed bag. Um, you know, the speakers were great. 30 seconds to swap those out, no problem. Um, the battery was a real missed opportunity. Um, that should have been a gimme. It's, it's sort of sealed off in its own little lobe of the uh, light pack and uh, it would have been real easy to make it detachable and for some reason they didn't do that. So we scored it a three out of 10 overall on, on repairability. Um, probably not something the average person wants to crack open and try to fix themselves. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine most people probably don't want to crack open their technology because they're afraid they break it. At least I'm speaking for myself. Uh, but that's why I love watching you guys do it because you have no fear.